Hello noble ones, welcome back to my channel. It is such a pleasure to have you here today because you may now witness one of the best medieval games that was ever made. Sadly, one of the best. Now why do I say sadly if I own this game and I'm playing and have been playing this sh out of it. Well, here's the thing. We are in 2019 and we're getting really close to reach 2020, which was supposed to be an era of cyborgs and androids. And, and what we have in this fantastic era of gaming fertility is a visual fixation into the graphical capabilities of our modern day consoles and PC games. And I think it is rather refreshing to see a game that was made in 1991, ladies and gentlemen. 1991 getting as far as I'm concerned a higher vote in terms of medieval gameplay than the majority of games that I've been playing in the last 20 years. And after the spectacular failure Fallout 76 was, we can't help but asking the pertinent question, where the heck is the video game industry going in our, in our day and age? And that is the reason why I decided to jump into a time where creating a video game meant making a robust and fun entertainment experience rather than creating an exceptionally well-advertised and expensive expensive, disappointing money grab of a game. Now on this video I'm going to play this entire game and finish it for you twice. The game was released by Capcom, that is at a time when Capcom actually used to make good games, not money grabbing DLC encapsulated excuses of a game. You can find this game on PS4 and I am playing this game on PS4 right now, this is where I'm recording, and it is actually funny hilarious that I play this game on my PS4 Pro because probably while I was playing this game the entire structural computing infrastructure of my console was literally sleeping. Well the game is a beat em up, it's one of those games you just move forward and try to reach the end of a level and the system will try to stop you by bombarding you with a whole sorts of soldiers and enemies until we reach a, the boss of, at the end of each level, you've got seven levels once that's done that's done. But one thing I really like about this game is the people, the developers, actually put effort into making it look believably medieval. Now in this video you will see that the people are dressed in a believable way. Medieval nobles are wearing the actual proper colours. In fact, the medieval nobility in this game looks a lot better than in freaking Kingdom Come Deliverance, which was a game that based its selling point into historical accuracy. And yet this game has got better colours. Medieval nobility is wearing blues and bright reds and greens and yellows. They even got historically accurate and properly shaped arming doublets, ladies and gentlemen. What the heck? This is even before people cared of historical accuracy, probably the majority of humankind didn't even notice. Weapons and armour are interesting because, yes, yeah, some weapons are overly sized. I mean, again, this is 1991. And yet, you have poleaxes, you have got army swords and shields and the variety and variation of all the sorts of halberds and pikes and swords and weapons used by your opponents which change dramatically the way you need to fight them is incredible. Now given the armour looks bulky for the most part, but it's still very believable. You can literally recognize every single helmet that it's worn by the soldiers here, and there is so much variation between frog mouths, armets, great helms, bassinets, you name it, you find it. Even the ice lids look good and properly proportioned. Yes, there is the occasional spike here and there, particularly with some kind of black armor wearing enemies I suppose for variety but the majority of enemies they actually look believable and again this game is not even supposed to be historical it's based on the Arthurian legend you've got magicians people using magic on you and still it manages to be a lot more believable than the majority of games that I've played in the last 150 years this game is cheap you can buy it right now this video is not sponsored I don't even care 
I'm just saying this is a great game and when you buy it and it's cheap you also get six more games that you can play with your friends locally multiplayer the three characters that you can choose and I'll be showing you two of these characters mostly three characters are actually interestingly balanced they are not all the same so not only the combos they do and the sort of special moves that they have are different but also their skills are different and the way they level up are different because yes has even got RPG elements and leveling up and changing changing armor and weapons. So all characters have got an attack and a speed value. Now the attack is the amount of damage you deal when you attack your opponent and speed is how quickly your animation or should we say how quick your animation is when you do perform those attacks. So for example if you look at King Arthur he has a 4 in attack and 4 in speed which makes him a rather balanced fighter and he also is the most devastating of all three characters when he's mounted so if there is a horse there is also a certain level of strategy if you're playing multiplayer because you should let the cat the player who uses Arthur to mount it because his attacks from horseback will deal more damage if there are two horses please be my guest and have fun Lancelot is my favorite and he is the fastest characters with his speed standing at five points but he's also the character who deals less damage so with his damage input being just a low three now believe it or not actually he is the best character for a be for beginners to use because even though it doesn't deal as much damage in this game it is more important to attack your enemies before they attack you than the amount of damage you deal so actually speed makes it a little easier to use again my favorite character the third character is Parsifal, and he's of course the strongest of all he is the only one who's not a swordsman he is using a battle axe which does not look like a real battle axe but hey that was the idea i mean well, this is the time these are the times of golden axe i'm just saying he has five points of damage so his attacks hurt a lot but he's also the slowest at attacking with only three speed but one thing he has is the only character that can dash and do a dash attack so i don't like Parsival never have never will so basically uh, maybe I'll just use him a little bit but I won't do a full playthrough with him because it would be a freaking chore however I will first play as you can see the entire game with Lancelot to show you how he levels up and the way I fight with him and then I will replay the entire game with King Arthur just because I'm having so much fun in doing it that I would do it even if I wasn't making a video about it fun fact I have finished this game probably 15 times and I still feel like I want to go through the entire thing again just because it's fun and every time you play it with a different friend of yours it's like you're having an adventure together it's fun you comment on everything you try to create a strategy you tell them come on go kill the Muppet who's using a polax because he's driving me nuts and in the meantime I'll go take care of the magician who's trying to burn you up since the moment he appeared believe me it's a game that it's so fun and easy to get into that even my father enjoyed playing it and he doesn't like video games i think the last time he played a game i was a 10 year old child this game gives you a real fun experience it doesn't go fancy about it it doesn't even try to give you something it's not promising it's a simple fun adventure made from people who probably played games and you can see that it is similar to other beat-em-up of the time but it also has its own peculiarities and I, and I think the thing that I like the most is the weapons and armor advanced advancement system now this is before the times that we actually had an inventory I'd like to point out so for most of you probably if you are in your 20s this might sound a little odd but what the game does and I think that this is great because it makes it quick and easy to access is that every time you level up or almost every time you level up it will substitute either your current weapon to an upgraded version which also looks differently from a graphical standpoint or an upgraded full suit of armor which again will increase the amount of defense you have and it will look completely different and I'd like to say that it is interesting again because the way the game does it there are no menus there is no need to go there and equip this and equip that and repair the item and it got broken nothing just you go on you kill your enemies you gain your treasure more on that later 
Another interesting mechanics on that, quite original. The cooler your character looks, it's simple. And it's great for one of those days where you just want to have some fun with your friends and you don't want to spend an hour and a half trying to learn how the game works. And when I say an hour and a half, of course, I'm not even mentioning games such as Endless Space that actually feels like I'm learning the amount of data needed to get an entire university degree. Literally, in an era where you have to learn how games work, work. The difficulty is not even the game itself is understanding the game mechanics rather than the actual game because then the game just holds your hand the entire way. Here it's just easy. It's a breath of fresh air and it's good for those of you who really like medieval things because it gives you the idea that you are inside an actual legend and you are the protagonist. So talking about the treasure system, the way you level up is that you have a certain amount of points that you need to gain and we won't call them experience points and I'll tell you why in a second. You need to gain a certain amount of points and once you reach that amount of point the character level levels up automatically. If, if it is one of those levels, because again not all levels change your gear, but if it is one of those levels where your gear changes then the change will occur automatically. The reason why I don't call them experience points is because when you find treasure on the ground and you gain it it will also give you points and again it's going to be the same points that will level you up so the best way to level up your character quickly at the same time turning the last levels into easier levels because your gear will be better is to make sure you don't let any piece of coin piece of treasure small little lovely chest bl or bloody scepter go because if they stay on the ground for too long they will disappear. The more loot you gain, the more points you get and the faster you level up. And the game allows you to choose to play in a more fair way when you're playing multiplayer because if you find some coin on the ground if you hit it with your sword it will split into multiple coins that then you can share with your friend and that way you can both gain a little bit of loot and level up faster together rather than just the first person that picks it up levels faster although that of course is also a way to play if you enjoy a little bit of competition onto who's gonna level up faster there are no potions to restore your health but there is just food you get hit by a battle axe in the mouth no problem just have a sandwich all will be okay <sighs> i miss the 90s so another thing that differentiates the leveling up system of the characters is the fact that for example some characters when they level up they first increase their weapon and then in the next level up they increase their armor and some characters do the exact opposite so again this is a strategic choice if you want to gain more attack first or if you want to gain more defense first now a character that I, now personally when i play lancelot who is my favorite as i said i tend to attack more more because he's quicker and so I prefer to judge distance, judge tempo and attack my opponents before they can counter. But when I play as Arthur I try to play more defensively because I don't have this advantage of being faster than the majority of the opponents I face and therefore I use the block feature a lot more. Given I don't use it as much as I should because this game actually tries to tell you that you should block. The reason being that when you manage to perform a proper block then you become invincible for a few seconds which and that is of course a very important thing particularly with some very nasty bosses still the game doesn't help and that's probably the only flaw because the way you perform a block is by touching the attack button and a split second afterwards touching the back direction with your d-pad and of course that's not easy to time and oftentimes if you make a mistake instead of blocking you'll be turning to the other side and hitting the air which also means that the sword of your opponent that was actually coming towards your eyebrow will hit you mercilessly. In the second playthrough that I'm going to play throughout this video we'll try to block a bit more with Arthur so that you can see how that mechanic works. Okay so anyways this is pretty much what I had to say I just wanted to share this video with you. I'd like to apologize for not making vi many videos lately but I've been going through a move and I moved back to my parents house and I left my home because I'm planning on moving to the, um, to the United States of America in April and so I decided that there was no point in keeping the house anymore so I basically left it I'm staying at my parents for a little bit and then in April I'm gonna move to America so that's happening and that's why um, I couldn't make 
make many videos but the next video will be a for honor video talking about a top 20, 20 uh, sorry gosh let me try that again a top 25 hero list talking about for honor but in real life so look forward to that and in the meantime i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the metatron i'm now gonna, I'm now gonna just shut up and keep on playing and try to get to the end of the second playthrough and i hope that you enjoy it thank you so much for watching and at the very end i'll say something um just before closing to say thank you to the people who actually watched the entire video because that would be very very surprising thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you at the end of the second playthrough.
Okay, noble list of noble ones, because that's how I I have to call you, because I mean, you watched the entire thing. How did you do that? And maybe you're even wondering why did I not make another Parsifal run, and that is because I really hate Parsifal. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, I really have to commend people who um, spend so much time watching my content. Thank you so much for watching, but let me know if you have ever played this game, if you haven't, let me know if you think you want to play it, and let me know if you bought it, and if you did, if your brother liked it, if your cousin liked it, if your cat liked it, and I really think that they will. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye, thank you, ciao ciao. ciao. Albert.